All right, welcome to the Teach website. Um, Dom, are you going to introduce me or should I just go for it? Well, I was going to introduce you. So uh, we'll I'll give you a break it. for a moment. Um, so everyone, we, I'd like to welcome Elisa Taylor. She's um, one of the most senior instructional designers we have in um, City, uh, and she has been working relentlessly over the summer, uh, spring and summer, to help us consolidate a lot of our um, resources uh, for you to be able to find information about the tools and the information and best practices that uh, we support here at Utah State University. Um, Elisa is a fantastic resource and the expert that we have in instructional design and remote teaching and delivery and distance delivery at our institution. So with that, I'd like to turn the time over now to Elisa to uh, share with you some of the work that she and her team have done to develop this teach.usu.edu resource. So there you go, Elisa. Thanks, John. Uh, this has really been an exciting project. Um, I kind of got tasked with our website because I do so much work with our statewide campuses. Um, those of you who are at a distance and are not in Logan and don't have the ability to just drop in to our office and see what we're doing. So we wanted to uh, have a, a place for you to find materials that you need. Obviously with the pandemic, it was really hard for you to come in and visit us. So having stuff available online, it was really a good thing and gave us a lot of good data to go from as we approached creating a new website. One of the things that we wanted to do is combine our city resources with our classroom support resources and our uh, empowering teaching resources so that you could go to one place and be able to find what you need for all of those things. And I hope we've achieved that. And we will get, to, I'll get some feedback from you at the end to see how well we have done on this. Uh, but just to, to get started, I kind of just want to walk you through what we've got. Um, I'm going to just take a few minutes to show you um, how it's laid out. Um, it should be self-explanatory so that you can explore it on your own. And if you want to, I am going to put uh, the website in the chat. So it is just teach teach.usu.edu. So feel free to click on this and you can explore while I'm talking if you want to, or you can follow along with me. So along this top bar, um, we really wanted to, the search to be highly visible <clears throat> so that you can get to what you need, what you're looking for when you need it. Um, chances are, if you come to this website, you're probably looking for something specific, um, how to do something in Canvas or how to do some, something in Zoom. And so you might want to just jump into uh, searching the site for things that you might need. So that's, we made that really prominent. Um, we have um, tried to update and add in um, images that will help you find things a little bit easier and uh, search results. So I can look up assignment and I can get a bunch of different results that deal with assignments and hopefully you can find the one that is pertinent to you. We've tried to put on our website um, just things that are really helpful for you, um, things that you might need or might use and uh, to be able to see what those things do and how to do them. Um, some of them are specific to things in Canvas and some of them are more general. We've added on each one of our tutorial pages, a little video um, that has just a, a little bit of audio, but it's mostly music that most of it doesn't talk you through much, um, but it'll show you the process that you need to do to do something um, that you're gonna be doing. And so that's kind of really nice for people who don't have a lot of experience with Canvas yet. They need to, uh, see where to go to find things. Sometimes just a, a small screenshot is not helpful. Um, and so these full videos, uh, we kept them short. Most of them are under a minute long, just to show you quickly how to do that, that particular step. So we hope those are gonna be helpful. Um, below the video, we break it down into specific steps. So if you're someone who likes to skim, 
through things. Um, you can see the instructions to go through it. And if you've done most of the steps, but maybe there's a piece of it that you don't remember from the last time you did it, this will allow you to jump really quickly through uh, that content and find the thing that you need. Um, over on the left-hand side, we've tried to list everything that's pertinent to the tool that you are looking at at the time. So um, all of the pages that we have are listed in an alphabetical order. So hopefully that'll make you make it so that you can find things easily um, that are related to that item. Before on our website, we kind of had some things that were um, linked on only certain pages or kind of hidden. And so it was kind of hard to find things sometimes. Uh, but this should be a little bit more straightforward to be able to jump in between, oh, I need to look at what the, that overview is. And then you can kind of check that out. So under the help topics, um, this is all of our stuff that we have uh, information on. So not only do we have information on kind of tool stuff, Canvas and My Media and Zoom, we also have things about the Academic Testing Center, assessment, um, classroom technology, as I mentioned before, student engagement. So what can you do to get students more engaged? Some ideas there. Some things about lecture recording, teaching softwares, uh, teaching tips, and our keep teaching resources from that we created quickly for the pandemic to help all of you keep going. Um, so you can jump into any of those and get some ideas about specific topics. Um, one of the ones that is extra, um, has some extra content that you might not expect, this teaching software, that kind of includes all of the big stuff, what we call kind of the big three, Canvas, Zoom, and My Media, but it also includes a bunch of additional stuff that you may not know that we have at Utah State. So this talks about all of the different stuff that we support and how it might be useful to you. So this is a good page to go through and look and see if there are some things that you didn't know about or might be interested in, in um, that can help you with your teaching and with your classes. Under the workshop and events, we've combined our um, city workshops with our Empowered Teaching Excellence events because there are so many of them. So this talks about each one of the options that are available through ETE, the, the conference or if in today, um, foundations, it's for new faculty, eLearn X, which is for an online uh, teachers who are teaching and want to kind of do a deep dive in the summer. ETE 10, which is that those digital badges that they talked about in the opening, the learning circles, which are the books that we read with a group and the seminar series, which are usually invited guests that come to USU to speak about teaching. So this will tell you what's next up on the calendar and you can get more information about all of that stuff. We've also included our city workshops. So all of our workshops that we're doing are listed here. Um, you can kind of jump to specific things. If you're interested in Canvas, you can jump down to the Canvas workshops and see what Canvas workshops are available. Uh, see a little bit of a, a detailed instructions about or description of what those are and register for those workshops. Um, I think most of you have probably figured out uh, how that, that registration process works. Um, we also have over here what's coming up. So if you are interested, you're looking for something that's going to might help you, but you're not sure exactly what you need or where to start, um, this is a good place to look and see what is available in the next little while. Um, I always kind of laugh and tease about the workshops that are coming up because chances are you're not going to go to the movie theater and say, I want to see a movie, which one's playing. You're probably not going to come into our website and say, I want to attend a workshop. Which one are you teaching today? So um, chances are you're probably coming in through, through these topic lists, but sometimes, especially at the beginning of the semester before the school year starts, it's kind of nice to come in and see what, what are we teaching? What is new? What could help you? with your class. And so this is kind of an interesting way to view that. Um, the programs that are offered um, through ETE, Scott's and our workshops are there. Um, there might be additional things that get added in the future. So we've left a place for that. Um, requests and reservations. We have a pretty long list of things that you can either request or reserve um, through either our group or other groups. 
So these are from city, from classroom technologies, uh, from the me media team downstairs. Um, for classrooms, you can reserve a, a room if you need to have a room for a, a meeting or an event. Um, you could get an ad hoc broadcast if you want to do an IVC event for, for something. And so hopefully this is good one place to come and quickly find what you might have uh, searched for in a bunch of different places. Our resources um, are some additional resources that are available uh, to, to you, um, analytics examples and information. This course workload estimator is really a neat um, tool. You can go in and put in the number of pages of reading you're gonna have your students do, the difficulty of that reading, uh, the number of lectures that are involved in the class. It's mostly for online classes, but you can get a good idea of how much time it's gonna take students to do things that you're assigning them and kind of get a kind of a feel for how big is this class that you're expecting students to, to undertake and all of these chores that you want them to do, basically. Um, are they, is that gonna be helpful or do you need to look at some different resources? Uh, so that's a great tool. The ETE archive. So today you're gonna hear lots of great presentations. This archive of previous presentations and workshops will give you a full library of things that have happened in the past that have been helpful to other people. And uh, it's a wealth of knowledge. Our online course quality rubric is available here. So if you're teaching an online course or if you are teaching a blended course and you wanna know kind of what things we look for and try to include into our online courses, you can go in and look at that rubric and see what are those things that we try to uh, provide to students and get from them when in an online class. Our ETE publication, so the Journal on Empowering Teaching Excellence is a newer journal. Uh, it's got a lot of great articles in there already. Um, we've had, oh, I could click on it and it'll tell me how many. Uh, issues here. So you can see several issues um, that have been published and are available that help you with the teaching ideas and see what other people have done. So that's kind of a fun resource. And a couple of other things there. Um, ETE recognition. So we saw this morning a bunch of people got awards for doing certificates. So you can come in and see who those previous reward recipients were and you could see what you need to do to become among their ranks. Uh, we have a, a couple of podcasts we're dipping our toes into um, to share teaching ideas and you can take a look at those. Um, scheduling resources, again, we brought in classroom scheduling stuff and so that, that gets involved here, um, student engagement and the Utah Teaching and Learning Group. Uh, that does a conference and uh, some other ideas there. I'm particularly happy about how our staff directory turned out. Um, this is a great resource for you to be able to find who you need and want, because um, you may not know who to call in a particular instance. So this di main directory has a big, you know, pictures of everyone who's on our various teams. So you can see them all and be able to pick out from among who you might have worked with in the past, maybe you remember what they look like. So that's a good way to do it. Or you can use the different teams on this left-hand side and filter. So if you wanna see all of the city team, you can see our city team here and see who is involved in our team. The other thing that we have a listing of is instructional designers by college. So if you are teaching for the College of Engineering, you can come on to this College of Engineering uh, instructional designer assignments and see that Neil and I are the instructional designers for the College of Engineering. The first person listed is the main contact. The second person, of, the person listed is the secondary contact. So if you go to a schedule an appointment with Neil and he's not available, then you can come in and try to schedule an appointment with me. Um, and this is just turned out really well um, and has you know, pictures of everybody and, and links to their appointment schedulers. Hopefully you've all used that and know how that works. So that's a new website. Um, 
what are your initial impressions? Do you like it? Is it going to be helpful? Does it include things that you've been looking for? Is there something that's missing? We'll take a couple of minutes and I'll let you give me some feedback. If you have any. Uh, we are going to be adding more. Um, Jillian said she's particularly excited about the atomic assessment section. Um, that is a section that I am continually adding to and beefing up. Um, and, and we'll have more information on that. We're adding a couple of new tools this fall that I'm kind of excited about. Um, Delphinium is one of them and it is for gamification. And so that's gonna be, we're gonna get some new materials up about that. If that's something that you're interested in, um, watch for those in the, in the near future. Um, let's see. Ah, okay, great, Dory, thank you. Yep, I, I agree that it was kind of confusing to find things <laughs> previously. So it's kind of nice that we have everything all together now as much as we can from at least from our group so or our groups all right one more thing that we are going to be working on in the next semester and going forward into the future is we are going to be sending out newsletters and so this is a sample of a newsletter that we're sending out for the summer, um, talking about some, some changes and some things that are coming up. Things happen in technology so quickly that it can be daunting sometimes. So we're hoping to do a better job of keeping you in the loop on things that are coming out that are new and uh, to show you what things are available. Um, Canvas does updates every three weeks. Uh, usually they're small updates, but occasionally there's something that's really helpful or that could be really helpful for you. Um, we tried to do these um, things in the uh, end of the semester um, to or the end of the summer to show you things as you're coming back. And so we're gonna do that a little bit more frequently um, in the middle of the school year as well so that you can get the information about what is coming up. So I did want to show you this resource. Um, it's going to be coming to your inbox shortly, uh, but, but the, here's the information and you get a first glance of what's going on. So you're aware of the, the email change, but you may not be aware of how that impacts you and impacts students. One of the things that it does is it makes it so that students have their own Zoom accounts so they can log in. Um, it also makes it so that you can re require them to be registered. We um, encouraged you to not do that in the past because they didn't have the Zoom accounts, but now everyone can. So if you want students to be registered for the class to be able to admit it, that can help with your security so that you're ensuring people don't come into the class that are uh, associated with USU. Um, a word of caution, if you are going to have guest speakers, that would preclude your guest speaker from joining. So be aware of that. Um, the other thing that it in, does is it allows students to have Office 365 accounts, um, which can give you some options to do Office 365 types of things. And we're going to be including some more information about how to turn those types of act, assignments on in Canvas, because there's some off, options for Office 365 assignments that could be more collaborative. Um, and so we'll be getting more information for you uh, through our website and probably through the newsletter as well on that as the fall semester progresses and we kind of work out the details of how that's going to work. One of the things that's come to uh, Canvas over the summer that is a little bit exciting, um, they are doing a participation data in the new analytics. And so if you want to turn on new analytics as a feature in your course settings, you'll be able to see the day after you turn it on, you'll be able to start seeing attendance and after students start showing up, of course, of what's happening there. And probably the thing I'm most excited about um, is the student annotation. 
So for years you have used the speed grader and people have asked and requested for the ability for students to be able to do a similar annotation on their assignments. And so Canvas has made that possible and I'll just show, hopefully I can I can't go full screen. Maybe I can zoom into this though so you can see it a little bit better. Actually, I better do this. I can't optimize for my video clip on the portion. Oh, okay. Hopefully this is not too awfully choppy. Instructors can use an annotated assignment type to upload a file for students to annotate and submit directly in Canvas. In the assignment creation page, instructors can select the option to create a student annotation assignment type. The file that should be annotated is uploaded for the assignment as part of the online assignment type. Students can complete the annotation assignment directly in Canvas using the annotation tools in DocViewer. Annotations can also be created on the Canvas Student app. So that's just a brief look at, uh, at that option. Um, there is some note that not all students may be able to do the annotations depending on their particular device. Um, so uh, they encourage you to leave an option for students to do an upload uh, as well on, on the assignment type, but that's pretty exciting. I know we have a couple of instructors that are, are looking forward to that and have been requesting it for some time. So that's an exciting thing. A um, couple new things in Zoom that you may or may not be aware of. Um, I was telling my other co-presenters this this morning that you might not know that you can move video around when you're looking at the gallery view in Zoom. And so you can click and drag different video windows around on that gallery view to put them in um, in places where you want them to sit. Uh, but it's going to be improved even more by an immersive view. So the immersive view kind of puts a virtual background around your whole class. And so you see like an image of a classroom with different pods on that video and you put students heads where you want them in that pod. So you can kind of create groups um, in your in your virtual environment. Now you're the only one that sees that, the students don't see that immersive view. So um, it may not be helpful for everyone, but it might be helpful for you to remember where people are, what groups they're in and what they're doing. Um, maybe put some of your less active speakers more up front and center so that you can remember to call on them more frequently if you're doing a web broadcast. So that's kind of an exciting thing. I think it's fun, I don't know. After being in Zoom for a whole year, it seems like a good idea to have a little bit of uh, something that unites the whole class and puts them on the same, same background. Um, in breakout rooms, when you have started the breakout room, when you go to do a content share, now that you have the option to share to the breakout rooms. So if you have materials that you've prepared on Google Slides, well, Google Slides is the, the easiest because they could do that with a link. But like if you have a PowerPoint or something like that that you want to share while they're in their breakout rooms to have instructions or a reminder of what they're supposed to be doing while they're in those breakout rooms, you can now share that content. So that's pretty exciting. And you may have found already that new emojis are available in the reactions menu. So yes, you can send me the poop emoji. <laughs> and Karen send me Oh, a smiley star hearts. Lucy, did you have a question? Or are you just practicing? No, I was playing, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I love it. Um, it also has support for gender pronouns. So if you wanna go put your gender pronouns, you have to turn those on in your Zoom, on the zoom.usu.edu website first. And then you'll have the option um, when you do it, if you want to share those always, or if you want to, decide when you share the gender pronouns and then you get asked at the beginning of the Zoom meeting for this meeting whether you need to share those pronouns or not. So that's kind of a nice feature um, and then it will be available and visible next to your name. Um, 
atomic assessments. We now have Proctorio available in atomic assessments. And so if you've been waiting for that for a while, um, that is available. If you're not a familiar with atomic assessments, it is something that came out spring of 20, well, or was it fall? It was fall of 2019. So it came out pre-pandemic, um, but it is a nice little assessments tool for giving instant feedback. So on a question by question basis, students can check and see if they got their answer correct or not. And so it's perfect for formative or yeah, formative feedback so that as students are going through things, they can see, you know, am I understanding this right or not? Um, it does offer some other question types that are available as well. Um, so it's kind of a fun little tool and you might want to check those that information about that out in our website um, or check with me uh, to get information about it later. So that is kind of a summary of what has come out new this summer. I will stop sharing and see if you have any questions on any of that uh, that I can answer up to this point. Actually, now I do have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, do we have to update the Zoom or is automatically are going to present all the new features that you are describing? You will need to update Zoom. So that is one thing about Zoom as you are using it. They also do fairly frequent updates. So if you haven't checked your Zoom for updates um, in your Zoom application, if you go up on the, the zoom.us um, link, you can do a check for updates. That's where it is on a Mac. <clears throat> on the PC, it is under your user profile image on the main Zoom login screen. Uh, you can click in there and then check for updates that way. So check for updates, make sure you keep your software up to date because you will only have access to new things that come out as you update that software. Great question, Lucy. Um, I see Craig asked me earlier about the website and who contributed to it. So the offices and organizations that contributed the content were the city team, so the Center for Innovative Design and Instruction. So all of the um, course development resources are available there. All of our stuff about um, faculty support for tools usage and um, workshops on those. Um, the classroom team, so the classrooms that are broadcast capable and Zoom capable, the, the team that puts that together. So all of the information about how to use Zoom in a classroom, how to use um, crowd mics if you're in a big classroom in, on campus, how to, students can share using their cell phone with a crowd mic app. Uh, they just click on the um, button on the app and then their microphone in their cell phone becomes a speaker and it can be shared um, to, the, to the classroom and to those who are on Zoom. So some things like that um, from the classrooms team and then the um, ETE group also contributed some of their resources. So, all right, I think I've got everybody. Um, I was going to show you if you wanted to see it, how those annotations work. <clears throat> so when you're creating an assignment, you have the option obviously to do the online submission. So when you come in here, you have to have an online submission for students to be able to submit online. There is the new student annotation option that you can check. So you just check that box and then it will ask you for a file, um, whether you wanna pick it from uh, the course files, from your personal files, or if you wanna upload it from your computer. So I've uploaded this James Kleiman journal. This is an assignment that one of our history professors uses. Um, it's an original, it's a typed written uh, version of this James Kleiman's journal. And he has students that do um, document editing to it every semester. <clears throat> In the past, they've had to download that, um, you, you know, use Word uh, and make those changes. So this will allow them to make comments, highlights, uh, suggestions on where that document should be edited. 
Um, I also included the option for them to do a file upload if they wanted to download the document and do them the traditional way. Um, so that is also an option. So then I just saved that. And then you can see in here when the students go in, it, <clears throat> it looks really similar to what you see when you're in the speed grader. Oh, I should. I have that up. I think I closed that window, darn. Um, instead of submit assignment now, it says begin assignment or start assignment. And then the students get this view of the, the document with the annotation tools, just like you see in the speed grader. So as I'm looking at it now as a teacher in the speed grader, I can see the highlight that the student made and what uh, annotations the student made along with that. So I can grade them uh, based on those annotations and highlights. So that's super fun. All right, let's see. Now I've got a follow-up question. The main objective of the website when it comes to teaching, mainly about connecting instructors to teaching technologies and incorporating the technology in the classroom. So the purpose of the website is twofold. Uh, we are looking to uh, both provide you with information on tools, but then also provide you with um, some teaching suggestions as well. So here is our teaching tips section. Thank you. My um, downstairs neighbor colleague brought me a glass of water. Thanks, Ryan. I must be sounding really dry and, and <laughs> washed up at this point. Uh, good, good teamwork. Um, he's from our multimedia team. Okay, so on um, on here, the, the idea is to give you some additional um, teaching suggestions too. So we talk about active learning, we talk about accessibility in the classroom and on uh, web uh, resources. So there is some stuff about in, uh, in classroom, um, active learning, classroom polling, flipping the classroom, blended learning. So there are things specific to face-to-face -face classes as well. This is not just for online um, classes, um, but there are resources for face-to-face -face online and broadcast classes too. So, and we will continue to update, update these tips as we get great ideas and get more information. Um, I think this group work tips was mostly contributed to by Christy Bloxham. So she did a workshop last year at the ETE conference, which was great about her group work um, and went really extensively in what she did for her group work. And so we have um, referenced her here. Oh, I guess it was at eLearnX um, and talked to you the highlights about what she did with her group work. So some lots of, lots of good information here. And there is really so much on the website that I tend to point people to it. And I've more and more been sending links as people have asked me how to do stuff, because it's almost better to have the instructions with the video and the step-by-step -step than for me to tell you how to do it in an email. So you'll be seeing that more and more from me that I send you a link to where it is on our website. If there's something that's not on our website, oh, maybe I should show you this because I didn't show you in the Canvas section. There is a search for Canvas content and there's also the Instructure Canvas community. The search for Canvas content will search the content that is on our website specifically. So you can see um, in Canvas, uh, like I could look for media and it'll show me what is available for uh, enabling my media, opening my media, downloading a video, et cetera. So things specific in Canvas to media. If you are looking for something about Canvas and you don't find it on that initial search, this Instructure Canvas community is all of the resources that Instructure has provided about, um, let me do video here, uh, about all of everything, <laughs> basically. They have lots of different guides that are available. You do have to be careful to watch for you know, if it's part of the um, student or uh, instructor guide, so it'll tell you right here, this is part of the instructor guide on how to embed video. So that's probably gonna be more pertinent to you than if you see the one that is embedded in the student guide, but you also might be able to 
have a use of something that's available in the student guide. Um, speaking of student guides, there is another resource that is available. through the academic support website. It's academic, academic dash support slash technology. And it is another set of resources that we've put together from our office to help you provide to your students in how to do some of these things. So we realized that the things that we implement might be a little bit different from what they're used to or what they've used maybe at their high school when they're coming in, or maybe you expect them to do a video on a discussion and so how do how do they do that so we have included in here some instruction guides for students to help them complete what you might be expecting them to do based on what um, technologies are available so this is another good resource to have access to and i will share that in the chat um, so that you can take a look at those usually if we're you're working with us on something specific um we'll create a, a page for this site and then we give everyone access to it but then your students get kind of a, a more specific to your class how they use it in your class version of that there is in here a canvas overview for students that takes them through it's a little bit longer video uh, almost 10 minutes long takes them through the canvas um, interface and how to use it uh, they're probably not as frequently as are used to be, but students coming into college often have uh, phobias about uh, the technology and using Canvas too. Uh, I know some instructors kind of struggle with it and some students kind of struggle with it. That was the one of the biggest takeaways that I had from teaching a class was how big of technophiles and <laughs> technophobes we have the, of students who are taking classes and how it scared them. And so I tried to do my best uh, of my job to help them through what they needed to do and show them the steps to do it. And I think that might've been part of what um, helped me start creating materials for students that are, that are related to things that we're showing you how to do from our office. So that is another uh, really good resource that we are continuing to add to. Well, that is what I have for you today. We'll end just a little bit early unless you all have some more questions. Oh, Karen liked, or Karen, sorry, uh, like to point students to the Canvas notification preferences. Yeah, that's an excellent one um, on the notification preferences and how they adjust those. That also might be something that you want to do this semester if you have been inundated with all of the different um, notifications, you can, change those in bulk and Canvas also sometime in the last year made it possible for you to adjust notifications for just a single class. So if you have a class that you are taking or um, teaching that's going to require more notification, you can adjust notifications for just that course. So if you don't want to hear from your general ed class of 700 students very frequently, but you need to hear more from your um, upper division course with students meeting uh, more frequently and having fewer students, then you can adjust those notifications, which is really nice. Uh, yeah. All right, any other comments or questions before I end today? Thank you for attending. You've been a great audience and support, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you.